G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Too Good Investing Channel. In this video today, we're going to be discussing Metastock and I'm going to be providing you guys with an updated sum of the parts valuation for Meta. So essentially what I've done is I've split Meta into its different business segments and I've valued each of the business segments one by one and then I've added up that value and then I've calculated what kind of rate of return you can expect based on different assumptions made in the model. So before we get into that model, let's just point out where Meta is trading at the moment. So it's trading at $144.79 in the pre-market. Look, I don't really care too much about these short-term moves, but what I do want to point out is that Meta is actually trading at similar or less valuations than what it did back in 2017, about five years ago. And it wouldn't take much more of the stock price to uh, of of stock price declines for it to reach its sort of late 2018 low of 125 dollars essentially. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see what kind of value Meta is at the moment. So what you're looking at here is my sum of the parts valuation. So I've broken the business down into its five main assets. So we've got cash, we got WhatsApp, we got Messenger, we got Reality Labs, and then we've got Instagram and Facebook. So this is the real cash cow of the business, their advertising business. So net cash, well, this was pretty easy to calculate its per share value. All I had to do was take the net cash, which is the cash and cash equivalents on the balance sheet minus the long-term debt. Meta has no long-term debt. So all I had to do was take the cash, divide it by the shares outstanding, and then this gives us a cash value per share of $14.92. Now, what about WhatsApp? So I valued WhatsApp here at about $15 per share. How did I do this? Well, back in 2014, Facebook at the time, obviously they're called Meta now, they purchased WhatsApp for $19 billion, and at the time, WhatsApp had 465 million users. Fast forward to 2022, WhatsApp has 2 billion users. So what I've done is I've extrapolated the price paid per user and took it out and extrapolated it to 2022 numbers. And... Look, you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, this, this is a bit unrealistic. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. So to be conservative, I divided this number by two. You can see this here in the formula. So using the same logic, I'm like, okay, well, Messenger has about a trillion users. So pretty much what I did was I took the uh, WhatsApp number and because Messenger has about half the users as WhatsApp, I pretty much sliced this in half. So we got a messenger per share value for, for the app of about seven fifty. Now Reality Labs. This is a big controversial part of their business. Obviously, Meta is in, is investing a lot of cash and a lot of their earnings into the metaverse, trying to build that out and building out the reality lab segment or their business. So in this valuation, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit conservative here. I'm going to say, okay, well, they're going to burn about $30 per share of value. And in 2026, you know, they're still going to be at a negative per share value for all the money they invested into metal, uh, into reality labs. And at the moment they're investing, you know, about $10 billion per year into reality labs. So while it's a lot, it feels like it's a fair bit of uh, Meta's sort of, you know, profit, which which it is. You know, they're still making significantly more than that in the first place. So, if we now look into Instagram and Facebook, well, I went on to their income statement. I took the uh, operating income of Facebook and Instagram for 2021. It was about 57 billion. I applied a earnings multiple of 15, and then I divided by the shares outstanding, and we get a per share value of about $315 per share. 
we add up all these values and we come to a value of $322 for Facebook's assets. Well, that's today's share price. What will what could it be in 2026? Well, I've applied a five-year growth rate to the per share value of the assets and that lands us out at a 2026 share price of $473 per share. And that gets us at a CAGR of 27% per year. So based off this model here, it seems very attractive. Um, is it possible that, you know, Facebook grows at 0%? Well, I think it's quite unlikely, but let's say they did. Well, you're looking at a 17% return. What if you're like, okay, well, you know, I don't think WhatsApp and Messenger, they're what I think they're useless they're not worth anything well look they they don't it doesn't really matter all that much right um you're still looking at a 25 percent return in this scenario what if you're like damn like you know they had a big 2021 you know facebook and instagram their their operating income you know that, that's too high for 2022 that's too high going forward you know, maybe it's too high. In my opinion, I think the operating income for Facebook and Instagram, at worst, it should stay around this level. But let's say you're like, okay, well, look, they're, they're going to have a bad year, you know, this year, and they're going to struggle moving forward. Let's bring it down to 30 billion and let's raise this growth a little bit. Because they're going to be coming from a low base. They're going to be buying back shares at this price. Um, you know, let's call it 12%. Well, you're still looking at a CAGR of 16% per year. Um, let, let's rework this. Let's uh, change the Reality Labs. Let's say you think Reality Labs aren't going to burn any cash. And it's going to be a success. Well, you're looking at 29% return. Let's say, you know, they're going to spend $100 per share on... Uh, you know, reality labs over the next five years. There's no way they're going to spend that much, but let's just say they do. It drops the value down to $370 per share and a CAGR of 21%. So, look, it's hard to argue that Meta is not cheap at the moment. No matter how I kind of change these valuations, we're still getting decent looking returns here. Meta is a valuable business. It produces a lot of free cash flow. Yeah, the margins are compressing a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how much this affects things over the long term. So pretty much, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have a good one.